Hello everyone, I'm coming back after somewhat long break to finish recording of Spark videos. So last time we stopped at RDDs, we discussed RDDs, and I wanted to cover more things. I wanted to cover how to run Spark in the cloud and also Docker, and I want to start recording these videos because uh, now you're taking care of your projects and maybe some of these things will be useful for you. So first I want to cover running Spark in the cloud, which uh, in this section we will talk about uh, first seeing how we can connect to Google Cloud Storage, then we will see how to create a local Spark cluster, and then we will also see how to create a data proc cluster using Google Cloud. So let's start with connecting to Google Cloud Storage. And for that, I want to thank Alvin. So Alvin already made a post about how you can do this. I just want to follow his uh, instruction for doing this and setting everything up. Let's do that. I already started Jupyter Notebook, so let me open it. I am doing this in the same location as we did previously. So let me put it here. So in this location, we have this Spark SQL. I will just duplicate it and we will use it for connecting to Google Cloud Storage. And I will rename it to 9Spark Google Cloud Storage. This is the code we had previously. So we were running the thing in local mode and then we were reading data from our local folder called data. So right now, this is still in our local folder. First, I want to move this data to Google Cloud Storage. And uh, let me open Google Cloud Storage. We already have a bucket that we created. I have something here, but I want to delete. I want to start from scratch. So this is the bucket we have. And now I want to upload data to this bucket. The data that we have, it's right now I am this uh, big five folder and the data that we created is in the data folder. So let me go there and I have uh, PQ, parquet files, row files. This is the row SQL files and report. This is the result of our calculations. I want to upload the PQ folder to Google Cloud. For that, I think I need to use gsutil cp, which is short for copy. And now I need to specify the location in Google Cloud Storage, which will be the packet name and I'll write it to a folder called PQ. Since we're copying a folder, we need to add minus R flag, meaning recursive. And because we need to upload a lot of files, we'll add minus M flag. I think it's multi-threaded or parallel. Basically, this will use all the cores, all the CPUs we have on my computer, or actually on this, uh, I am using a remote computer for that, AVM, for uploading data to Google Cloud Storage. So now I run it. It is uploading data. It should be quite fast because, as I said, I am running this on a virtual machine. So let me refresh it to make sure it is working. Yeah, so we have something here. So we have the data and now let us come back to these instructions from Alvin. And now let's reproduce this and do something with our Spark reading from Google Cloud Storage. The first step here is we need to download the Cloud Storage connector for Hadoop. You can ignore Hadoop here, but we need to tell Spark how exactly it can connect to Google Cloud Storage. So we want to be able to connect to URL like this, Google Cloud Storage, then name of the bucket, which is this one then pq green whatever right so when it sees a url like that it needs to know how do i actually connect to this url to google cloud storage and we need to help it to tell you need to use this specific thing for connecting so we need to have this jar file this is a library in java that knows how to connect to google cloud storage so let me open this and see yeah so we need a cloud storage connector for hadoop 3 we can download it from this location. So this library is also stored in uh, Google Cloud Storage. So we can just take this and download the library. Let me create a directory. I'll call it lib, for example. And I will download this uh, jar now, this file. So it's gsutil. Again, I'll use cp. So I'm copying from a remote location to a local location. And we actually need Hadoop 3 because remember this Spark we downloaded was for Hadoop 3. Not that it makes much difference for us, but this is just the thing we need to download. And then we need the version. So as for the version, I have it somewhere here. Yeah, so this is the version we need, 2.2.5. I think this is the latest version. So this is a version not for Spark, but this is a version for this specific Google Cloud Storage connector. And we need to save it to this jar file. Okay, now it's downloading. It is over. We have it here. And the location is code, lib, and so on. 
we have downloaded it and now we need to follow this instruction the way we're doing it here we're creating spark session with a builder we need to change it a little bit for that we will need to import a few extra things so let me import that let me now execute this we do not run this right now because we need to do this thing so here we are configuring our spark so instead of just using builder we first provide the configuration in this configuration we still use the cluster in local mode the name is still test but here we also specify the location for this jar file so i will now specify the location which will be leap and then this jar so we keep this thing and now we need to specify the path to our google credentials because this is exactly how spark will know how to connect to our google cloud storage so i will put this uh, to a separate variable i'll call it credentials location and uh, for me credentials for you probably as well so it's in uh, google credentials google credentials and we just put it here so this is how we specify the config the next thing we need to create spark context spark context this is something we previously created with a builder but now we don't use builder we create the context immediately i think we were actually creating a session but then we will create first context and then create a session from this context so this is a little bit more involved uh, not to repeat this step i'll just call it hadoop config and yeah we'll have it here yeah, so this is just a little bit more compact and credential configuration again we just put it here and what this thing is doing it says when you see a file system that starts with gs google cloud here we have gs then we need to use this implementation which is coming from this jar file then we you need to use these credentials so let me execute that I think we saw this warning as well previously when we were creating. Okay, and now the last thing we need to do is this thing. So now we already have configuration, we already have context, now we need to create the session. Yeah, now let's test it. Hopefully it should work. I think it is working. I didn't follow the instructions word to word because I didn't download it to the Spark location, to jars. Yeah, maybe it is important, I don't know. But I put this in a separate directory. I don't think it matters here. Yeah, let's do something simple. Like first I'll do something like show. Yeah, we can see this. So it can access the data and it can show something. And now I'll do something simple like count. And we see it works. So I will not execute the entire thing. I don't think it's important. Let me just delete it. Yeah, the important thing here is how exactly you connect to Google Cloud Storage from your Spark cluster. Later, we will see that when we will use a managed service from Google for Spark, then we will not even need to do that. But before we go there, this is how you can connect to Google Cloud Storage from your local Spark. Okay, so that's all I have for now. And in the next video, I want to talk about creating a local cluster, local Spark cluster. So far, we were just using this local thing. And when we will need to submit something to the cloud, then instead of doing that, we will need to use something else. And we will need to use a tool called Spark Submit. So in the next video, I want to talk what this is and how to create a standalone cluster of Spark on our local machine. So see you soon.